Hi, Scott from Digital Fish with content that catches and a how-to on using burley off the rocks. You can simply toss a burley bomb into an onion sack and start fishing, but there's a few tips to get the most out of your burley and maximise your chances of catching a good feed. The first tip is to use a float to get your burley sitting further off the rocks. This broadcasts your burley over a larger area and draws fish in from a wider radius than having it just sitting at your feet. Burley comes commercially processed ready to use and there's a few different flavours. Bonito, pilchard or mackerel based burley is common and a good general value for money kind of burley. Next is salmon burley. Salmon burley is of course fish based but it is very oily and the white minced up salmon skin is very visible in the water. It is very good but also more expensive. Shellfish based burley like kinna and mussel burley can be good for the rocks particularly if you are fishing over mussel beds, targeting trevally or trying to avoid sharks in places like the west coast. To deploy your burley you need a strong cord or rope, preferably rope that floats so it doesn't sink and get tangled on the rocks. 30 metres or so is a good length. A plastic milk bottle makes a good recyclable float, but don't have it bashing up against the rocks as the top will pop off and it won't be floating anymore. Onion bags are good for holding the burley so the burley doesn't disintegrate too quickly if it does come into contact with the rocks. Crayfish bags are also a good choice as they are reusable. Take a knife and put a series of holes or cuts in the burley bomb. If you think you will shift and need to carry the bomb in a bucket, best to puncture the top so it doesn't all ooze out when being transported. Don't put too many big holes in the burley as once it defrosts it will very quickly disappear. Next, put it in the onion bag and tie the top so it can't come out. When I tie the rope to the bag, I don't tie it to the black drawstring as this can quickly come off as it isn't very strong and it is safer to tie the bag around the top instead with a series of half hitches as shown. This is much safer and will stay on longer. I usually tie the milk bottle on with a bowline knot and leave a long tag end to tie the burley on. On the other end of the rope I use a sinker trap. I tie a loop knot and a 100 pound mono with a small half ounce ball sinker on the loop. This is very easy to jam into a rock crevice and anchor the burly rope. Time to throw your burly in the water. It's usually best to be throwing the float out when you have a wind from behind, an offshore wind, so it can push the float out. If the wind is blowing straight in or to the side, you may have to keep chucking it out. It becomes a bit laborious. The best burly trail is a consistent stream of burly particles. You want to attract but not feed the fish and make it last as long as possible. It takes time to get the fish to your position and a steady trail helps accomplish that. Give the bag a tug every once in a while to make sure the burley is still releasing. A school of fish hanging under your burley means you've got it right. Keep watching the burley trail because if you're fishing with a mate, you want to see the 20 pound snapper first and cast to it before your mate does. You'll also get the chance to see some pretty amazing fish up close. If your burley bomb is too slow to release the burley, pull it in and give it a stomp every once in a while. Here is another method of getting burley into the water. I have two old trevally frames here. Thread the rope through the mouth and out the gills of both fish and tie the rope to the last fish through the mouth. This works well on kahawai and skipjack tuna frames as well. This system works best on steep rocky parts of the ledge. You want the wave action to move the frames up and down, scratching bits of fish into the water. You may need to adjust the rope as the tide comes in or goes out. Having the frames in the surge zone is important. A lot of burley can attract fish quickly, but if you don't have a lot of burley, a steady trail is more important over the whole day of fishing. You will often see the small fish getting close to the bag, but the big fish often will be hanging further back, sometimes just out of sight. I generally won't go rock fishing unless I have burley. It's an essential part of my arsenal, and the results always speak for themselves. Yeah, really nice fish. We caught some good fish today. Uh, had an encounter with a bronzy in our burley, uh, burley pot and he smashed that and took it off. Uh, but it's been a great day fishing on the rocks. Uh, nice calm northerly out here on the Rodney coast and uh, we're able to go back soon and uh, have some snapper for dinner. This is Scott from Digital Fish with content that catches.